it on the dotted line. Let's build it out for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Hoping and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at life with my own eyes. Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. The British are preparing for a large-scale foray into the South. My plan is to hit him when and where he's not expecting us, then run like the wind before he can catch us. He'll have to take new supplies from the local population. They will despise him for that. Then the people in the South will move over to our cause, and Cornwallis will withdraw. I hope if we don't stop Cornwallis there, he will drive north and crush Virginia. General Green, being appointed to command the Southern Army is quite an honor. Honor is an interesting word for it, James. The Southern Army is exhausted, and the British have a great deal of support in the South. We must rally the population here to our side, or we could lose the war. My greatest hope is that the governor of Virginia will provide me with much-needed men and supplies. My greatest hope is that he'll provide us with some much-needed Southern desserts. And I'm looking forward to writing a story about the man who wrote the words, All men are created equal. <laughs> the governor's mansion. Just think, in a few minutes, I'll be talking with Thomas Jefferson. <gasps> How do you address the author of the Declaration of Independence? Your Excellency. No too formal. Mr. Jefferson. No too familiar. I hope we get to see him soon. I can't take much more of this. She looks kind of like a chicken trying to dance in sticky mud. Sir, great to see you again. Ah, oh, that's better. The governor will see you now. Sir, great to see you again. Sir, great to see you again. Sir, great to see you again. We met before, in Philadelphia, you remember? Oh, maybe you don't. I was disguised as a chambermaid and I stole some of your trash. Well, I didn't really steal it. After all, it was trash and I was just doing some investigative reporting. And I was investigating you. No, that's not right. I was just trying to find out what goes on in that brilliant mind of yours. Anyway, hello. James, tell me that wasn't perfectly awful. It was better than I could have ever hoped. Forgive me. I was jotting down a thought about developing free schools that all our nation's children could attend. A pleasure, General. So great to see you again. Whoa! <laughs> And you must be Henri. Henri Richard Maurice Dutois Lefebvre, from France. Yum! So, how may I be of help to you, General? Governor Jefferson, the British are preparing for a large-scale foray into the South. I'm not surprised. Most Southerners are country folk whose main concern is earning their daily bread. They don't care which side they're on in the war. Quite so. Here's the situation we face. This half of the desk is the Carolinas. This half, Virginia. You're here. The traitor, Benedict Arnold, is off the coast. 
and Cornwallis holds strong British positions at Georgetown, Camden, Winsboro, and 96. Oh, yes, and here is the small force Horatio Gates has left me, a force I have not yet had the pleasure of seeing. I will take my forces to the Carolinas. If we don't stop Cornwallis there, he will drive north and crush Virginia. Governor, I'll need Virginia militiamen and weapons if I'm to have any chance of preventing Cornwallis from winning the South. I evened things out. Now it's a fair fight. <laughs> Yours is a difficult position, General. I will help you the moment I can, but right now I have no weapons to give you, and all my militiamen have served their required time and gone home. I'm afraid I can be of no help, General Green. I'm sorry. Soldiers can be asked to serve additional time, but cannot be forced to do so. The idea of a people's army is unfathomable. I admire what Governor Jefferson is saying, sir. Giving men the right to choose whether they will or will not fight sounds to me like freedom. But we're in a war, Sarah. We won't have any freedom if we have no soldiers. You do have a point, James. General, I hope you are successful in North Carolina. And James, Henri, I'll keep you up on events here in Virginia. In the meantime, I plan to find out how Thomas Jefferson found the inspiration to write the Declaration of Independence. I hope you don't end up as disappointed in Governor Jefferson as I am. Be well, Sarah. Look! Up ahead! Soldiers! Uh, are they British? No, probably some leftover Virginia militia. <laughs> I am General Nathaniel Green. Who's your commanding officer? General Horatio Gates, sir. At least he used to be. This is the Continental Army? With these soldiers, and without Jefferson's militia, we're no match for the British. <laughs> You're full of good questions, Sarah. Yes, I think we should educate everyone. Men, women, even slaves. And how exactly would you do it? Ah, there's the problem. Having ideas and implementing them are two very different things. Are they really? I mean... The stores are in place. The firewood has been cut. Your home is secure for the winter, Master. Thank you, Great George. I'll need Tuckahoe secured as well. And let me give you some letters for my wife and daughter. Excuse me, Sarah. We'll talk more later. Being governor takes a great deal of time for my family. Fortunately, I have help in remaining in contact with them. Help? You own other human beings and you refer to them as help? You own slaves! You, the man who wrote the Declaration of Independence, is what I wanted to say, but I didn't have the nerve. And by the way, Governor Jefferson is still unable to raise any militiamen to send to General Green. As always, Sarah. Have you noticed that every week it gets harder to tell what's in the soup? Hmm, we've got the usual bear fat, uh, but this batch looks to have beaver tail and muskrat. That can't be beaver tail. It's got a tooth in it. A tooth? I'm not eating this. That's a first, but don't complain to the cook. Poor guy has to make meals out of anything he can catch. There's only one way we can even hope to beat Cornwallis. <laughs> beat Cornwallis? Half the men aren't well enough to walk. Shh, come on. My plan is to hit him when and where he's not expecting us, then run like the wind before he can catch us. Chasing us will force Cornwallis to use up all his supplies. He'll have to take new supplies from the local population. They will despise him for that. Then the people in the South will move over to our cause and 
Cornwallis will withdraw. I hope. That is plan. Where's that coming from? We're under attack! Dear Sarah, I don't know if General Green's plan to get the British to chase us all over the Carolinas is helping us win the hearts and minds of the population, but I sure am getting to see a lot of the country. I do hope, though, that Thomas Jefferson can convince his militia to reinforce us before we get to see much more of it. But Sarah, how are you? Have you finished your interview with Thomas Jefferson? I can't wait to read it. No, James. What can I possibly ask him that wouldn't be horribly disrespectful? Governor, would you please tell your slaves about how all men are created equal? And on top of it all, Benedict Arnold is attacking from the north. Oh. Oh. That traitor. James, we are forced to evacuate Richmond. Sir, the British are nearing the city, 1,500 strong. What of our militia? Of the 4,600 men you called up, only 200 have reported. That means Arnold will march into Richmond unopposed. I never thought the traitor would make it all the way to Richmond. We must speed up our evacuation. Over there, the tree! Seek cover! Follow him! Not under the trees! We've got to get these men out of the rain. They could get struck by lightning. The trees attract it. It is what gave Benjamin Franklin his idea for the lightning rod. I'll yield to Dr. Franklin's science. Away from the trees! We'll try that barn over there. Let's go! Halt! We heard you are coming, General. Get off my land. Shelter from the rain, sir. That's all we require. I want nothing to do with your insurrection. You and your men, keep moving. We'll take his barn whether he likes it or not. Take it! Take it! Take it! Halt! You heard the man. We'll continue up the road. Move out! Always running from the enemy is working. That's because you don't understand General Green's brilliant tactics. At least this is an army now. An army people might join. An army that can't feed its soldiers or keep them dry? Oh, sure, I join that army. We have to put our faith in General Green. General Cornwallis, sir. All signs indicate that the enemy passed through here only hours ago. I told you burning our wagons and excess baggage would speed us up. Yes, sir, but it's also left us woefully short of food. There's a farm ahead. We'll take what we need. <laughs> no, stop! You can't do that! I... Ah! No! <laughs> Madam, your husband would do well to cooperate. Carry on! We're loyalists! We've never supported the fight against England! 
If you take our stock, how are we to eat? We are at war, my good woman. The king's soldiers come first. I have every confidence you will survive this inconvenience. Move out! I'm all right. I'm all right. Dear James and Henri, the British have withdrawn to Portsmouth, and we are returning to Richmond. Prior to our evacuation, Governor Jefferson had finally made some progress toward convincing the Virginia legislature to provide men and supplies for General Greene. Now he must start all over, and as for my interview with the governor, it will instead be an expose revealing his awful hypocrisy on the issue of slavery. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, Sarah. James, are we ever going to eat tonight? I found some ikari nuts, a hunk of ox jerky, and, uh, well, I think this was a squirrel. Get that thing out of here. Hey, that was hard to find. Is food all you ever think about? I was just... There's more to this war than filling your belly. I'm sorry, James. Wait, Henri, I'm sorry. It's not you. I just found out there are still no reinforcements coming from Virginia. So the army's gonna have to keep running. Just like in New York and New Jersey, just like in Philadelphia, just like they've been doing for the whole war. General Green says if we make it across the Dan River tomorrow, the running might be over. So what? You were right. His plan's not working. It's not winning anyone over to our cause. What am I supposed to tell the people who read our newspaper? Tell them, tell them our forces are so thin that uh, General Green does not want to risk their lives in an uneven fight. And tell them that the food in the South is not what it's cracked up to be, unless they like squirrel. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I need to get my men across the river and quickly. If the British catch us here, we'll be destroyed. Where are the fords? <laughs> fords? Yes, the best places to cross the river. Use your eyes, Colonel. The river's in front. Then I'll need your boats. Is that so? British or Continental, you boys are all the same. Think you can take whatever you want. Well, I know you're not going to send my boats back. That'd just be giving the Redcoats a way to cross the river. So you're going to have to pay for them before you can take them. That's only fair. I'll make you a trade. You will? I'll give you 20 horses for your boats. Good ones. Why am I just watching? This is a great story. The Southern Army owes you a debt of gratitude, sir. Thank you. General, I was neutral in this war. But from now on, consider me a, uh, uh, what are we calling ourselves these days? Revolutionaries? Sons of Liberty? Just Americans. Maybe we'll win their hearts and minds after all. American! I'm an American! disappointed that the legislature has once again refused my call for more militia, but I can't say I'm surprised. 
If you need men, sir, what about learning from the British? You could promise freedom to slaves who will fight for America. I might support it, but the Virginia legislature never will. The state's economy is dependent upon slavery. Is the economy as important as the fact that all men are created equal? No, Sarah. It isn't nearly as important. But, Governor Jefferson, you own slaves. Yes, but I have proclaimed slavery an abomination that must be brought to an end. Proclaimed? With respect, sir, proclaiming isn't doing. This is a young country, Sarah. Still locked in a battle for its own survival. There are countless issues to be addressed, limitless problems to be solved. Slavery is one of the biggest. And Sarah, we will solve it. Do you view me and my colleagues as great men? Yes, sir, I do. Well, we are great. Great with human flaws, as well as human hopes. I doubt there's a man among us great enough to see the horror of slavery eliminated in our lifetime. I've tried, and I will keep trying. And if we cannot correct this abomination, then those who follow us shall. Take courage in that. Governor Jefferson, I must confess. I've been writing an expose about you and your slave for Dr. Franklin's Gazette. But now, after listening to you, I don't think I'll publish it. I commend your passion, Sarah. When the war ends, I intend to draft a plan for freeing all the slaves in this country. I'd welcome your thoughts on the subject. Governor Jefferson, you don't know what you're getting yourself into.